The Tour de France Farm of X Swift is back for its second year and one team put on a show dominating the opening stage. I'm G'd up. Now this race, eight stages long, starts in Clermont-Ferrand and gets progressively more difficult as we head south towards the Pyrenees. We have a Tourmalet, we have a time trial in Po, AVV, Van Vleuten, the world champ, and Demi Vollering are the two co-favorites for the GC this is going to be an absolutely cracking race. But the opening stage, as I said, in Clermont Ferrand, punchy finish, and it's a really, it's one of those fringe stages where that last category three climb, 1.3k, 7%, could make it oh, perfect for Voss, but too difficult if paced, too hard, or is it perfect for Capecchi? Is it hard enough that Van Vleuten and Vollering, the Arden riders, get in on the action? Or do the SD Works go for Vibers? As the director of the race, Marion Roos, kicks off proceedings, we have the first breakaway attempts. They were from Arkea Samzik with Le Dunf, as well as Life Plus Wahoo. Kofidis also tried to get across, I think maybe Jaco Alula, but Trek and the big teams, Trek, uh, Jumbo Visma, SD Works, they were really controlling proceedings today, and no breakaway really got any leash at all. Like Tiffany Laurence went up the road, and uh, Fourcunet for tried to bridge, but even when Coop uh, tried to join that move, they were shut down. So, not much in the way for the breakaway today. We did see Balsam on the front, though, for tr Little Trek. So she was clearly in a domestique role in a stage she could maybe contest for the win normally, but she had a bad crash recently. SD Works, I, pro time, I still didn't know. Would they go for Volering? Would they go for Capecchi? Would they go for Vibers? AVV, it's just about not losing time to Volering in this sort of stage, frankly. I don't think she was too fussed about the stage win with her and Lippert. Martelak, though, spiced it up a bit and because it gets progressively harder the last 45 minutes of this stage with more and more hills introduced and they get more and more steep uh, as we progress. And yeah, SD Works, I've got to say, them and Little Trek just, just dominated the front in this phase. They got really serious uh, in the run into this intermediate sprint and really no other teams were able to move up too easily. Even Movistar burned through their riders pretty quickly. And, you know, SD Works Pro Time, they got Cicchini Major as bread of old Royster, I think, as dedicated domestiques. And Royce is like the best TT rider in the world. So being in front position is important. And Little Trek did a pretty good job of that for Sprout, although Elisa Long or Beginning was losing the wheel a fair bit. And I was, you know, thinking, is this too hard for Vibers? Now, she, her climbing has improved since she moved from DSM this year to ST Works. But this is really on the borderline. And, you know, what if Niva Yadoma kicks off? What if Lippet kicks off? Can she really make it? And then what are they going to do with Kopecky, who you see Royce looking back. Kopecky in the running with 5Ks or 3Ks from that the base of that climb. Capecchi wasn't really on the SD Works train too well. And you can see Royce looking back for her, whereas Little Trek, they were lined up. Uh, Hansen, Diagnan, Spratt, Longa Borghini to lead them in. S uh, Yama Visma kind of got slid off a bit, and it was Royce who entered in first position because it narrows through this roundabout of traffic furniture into the base of this climb, and that's exactly where you need to be. That's what a director loves to see, base of the most important climb, Royce, GC leader Vollering, Sprinter Vibers, Kopecky not far behind, happy days for SD Works. And we got our answer pretty quickly of what I thought they were trying to do on this quite difficult climb, which was controlling. Because you see, there's no attacks here. Royce is not trying to blow it up for Demi Vollering to attack, who won the Arden Triple this year. It looked to me like they're setting a steady tempo to deter attacks, but nothing nuclear so that Vibers can make it over the top. But we saw her start sliding. Here she is. She started in third position, remember, and we got 1.1Ks left. She's already sliding next to Charlotte Cool, and Capecchi's ahead of her. So would Capecchi have an option on this stage? The best classics rider in the world, who won Strade, who won Ronde van Vlaanderen, and on a punchy hill fresh. It's not like there were many hills before this to fatigue her like there would be in Liège, Boston Liège, for example. And here she's made up her mind. Kopecky's going to launch, Volering's gone to the front now, setting a steady tempo now that Royce has gone off the front, and Kopecky just inputs the launch codes in the Belgian national champs jersey. Nuvia Doma was boxed in initially by Volering, by Mulman, and by the time she gets out, you'll notice the perfect timing of this Kopecky attack. She's bigger than these. These are mostly GC riders with a punch behind her. Mulman and Nuvia Doma trying to react. Kopecky's a pure one-day rider compared to them. She's not a GC rider. Look how it's leveled out now. So she's punched across, done a big effort for 10 seconds, maybe less on the steeper gradients. But now it's her on basically false flat 
to the to the end of this KOM point or QOM point against Nuvia Doma. So perfect timing from her. And what does Nuvia Doma look back at? If she turns her head, she sees Demi Vollering, the favorite for the race, on her wheel refusing to contribute. So SD Works had the favorite, probably the best one-day rider in the world ahead. They had in this group three the best sprinter in the world, Lorena Vibers, with Marlon Royster able to pull her back as well to group two to put pressure on group two. And in group two, they had the woman that swept the Arden triple, the best sort of hilly one-day rider or overall rider maybe in the world with a punch, Demi Vollering. So without Movistar contributing, I didn't really see Lippert and Van Vleuten get to the front. Without Kopecky being a long-term GC threat in most people's minds, this was a wrap. SD Works played it perfectly. They got Volering disrupting proceedings. Mulman's isolated. No one's really pulling through with her. FDJ did have numbers in the group, and they did put Cavalli and Amusic on the front, but they're not going to bring back 30 seconds to a very fresh lot of Kopecky. So a, a clinic from SD Works and perfect teamwork. They got the yellow jersey up the road, potentially, if Kopecky can win the stage or they can win the stage. And now Group 3 comes back with Vibas to Group 2. That demoralizes people even further. So Shabby and Nuvia Doma start to attack, which I don't mind, to be honest, because like the stage is gone, but you've got Royce marking you. Uh, and so then volering like fifth wheel. So that was a wrap for Group 2, volering on the radio, saying the win is yours, Kopecky. Could she be a false threat on GC now? Taking such a big gap, could she do it again? That's what I want to see. She looks incredibly strong, wins the stage in the trick of law for SD Works, who make it a 1-2 with Vibas coming second. So exciting finish to this stage, but the strongest rider won. They gave her the option and the freedom to do so despite Vibas on the team. They managed it well with Vollering being the glue for the team. Hats off to them, and here's what Kopecky had to say after the stage. Yeah, it was something that was actually on my mind already quite a long time. <laughs> I think the last three weeks I was uh, joking about it with my best friend, and every day we texted each other and we said, like... Uh, 10 kilometers to go to yellow <laughs> so uh, yeah it's amazing that I can also just do it and um, yeah this final climb I had the feeling that I had some yeah something left and um, I just went and I thought yeah probably somebody will follow but nobody could follow and uh, yeah once I was on the top I knew it was yeah mostly downhill and or yeah slightly dragging down so I was like yeah I just uh, if I can keep my power they will not catch me back. Was it the team strategy this morning before the stage to play your card? Yeah, we had like, two strategies. Uh, two strategies actually, because uh, we had Lore Lorena, and it was if she could get over the climb, then we, we should go for Lorena in, this, in the bunch sprint. Um, but yeah, I also had my chance to go myself, and yeah, I'm happy I uh, they gave me this chance, and I'm also very happy that for the team, team as it works, that I can finish it off like this. But as I said, Kopecky takes the first yellow jersey of this year's race. I'll be back with stage two tomorrow. I think. Stage two could be a big GC day tomorrow if it kicks off. And I really think there could be gaps. So make sure you stay tuned for that recap tomorrow. See you then. Ciao.